I know it's been a minute since I did a Big Brother video or a non-wrestling related video in general, but Big Brother 26 just premiered for the past two days and I just feel the urge to come back and do a review. So I'm about to be reviewing this season. I used to review Big Brother a couple years ago, but then the pandemic hit and I became a wrestler and I kind of just got away from it. But I remained a fan. I watched every single season. I auditioned every single year, including this year. To be honest, I'm not going to lie. I feel like making reviews kind of like lessens your chance of getting on the show but at this point like i've auditioned five times and i'm not on the show yet so i feel like overview can't hurt so let's get right to the house the house looks beautiful as always the living room i love it it actually looks like i could see myself decorating my living room just like that there's also an ai theme which i mean that that checks out because ai is taking over but it's kind of been taking over so Let's get to the cast. So the first person we see is this woman named Rubina. She's Filipina. She's four foot nine, which is like shorter than Snooki. She's tiny. Uh, I love her intro though. She was very energetic and like to be honest, based off her intro alone, she seemed like she would be my BB bestie. Like I feel like me and her would be, ooh, that would probably be my ride or die. I'm not even gonna lie. She was the first person we saw, but like I feel like we had the same energy and like how she act is like how I feel like the energy I'm attracted to. So I feel like I really like Rubina. Next up is Cam. He's a former football player turned physical therapist. Uh, he brought up that his he lost his mom at three years old. So uh, I, my heart goes out to him because I can't imagine losing a parent, let alone losing a parent as a child. He seemed pretty cool. I like him. He says that some people see him as cocky, but he's actually very empathetic, and I feel like I can relate to that. So again, another person I feel like I have some similarities with. And he also mentioned that he's competitive, which uh, I definitely can see that because he's a former football player. Speaking of competitive, next up we got Mackenzie. She's a former volleyball player. So like her and Cam have something in common. Former athletes. She works in construction now. She kind of reminds me of Angela from BB20, which was the first season that I actually watched. So like I might compare a lot of people to BB20. That is also my favorite season. Fun fact. She seemed pretty cool though. Like she didn't really seem like it was nothing that I disliked about her. Next up, we have Joseph. The first thing I noticed was his mustache. <laughs> he looks like he would be a jokester, a funny guy, mainly because, like, the mustache. He works inside of a video store, and, like, it was funny because he was like, oh, yeah, people think that videos, you know, no one buys videos anymore, but we can have up to 15 people in the store at once. <laughs> I thought that was funny. He's also a poker player, or he likes to play poker. I don't know if he's, like, a professional poker player, but he mentioned poker, and we saw a little B-roll of him playing poker, so I feel like he's a competitive guy as well. He also mentioned later on in the show that he looks like a villain with his mustache, and I actually kind of agree. <laughs> But he also kind of just looked like a comedian in my opinion. Next up we got Angela. She's the mom of the house uh, this season or the older person this season. She's 50 years old. She's a mom, a grandma, a wife. She seemed really cool. She's a super fan. She got emotional. She mentioned that it's about time that a 50 year old woman comes and dominates the house. And I was just thinking, did you not see last season with Sari? Because, I mean, Sari ran the house in the beginning portion. The middle portion she got, you know... She was low on the totem pole, but she was still, like, she lasted to, like, what, final four, final five, something like that? So, I mean, like, Angela, maybe you can be that older person that actually wins the show, but we kind of saw Sari kind of dominate the house for, like, what, five weeks last season? Next up, we got my boy Kimo. He was really cool, of Hawaiian descent. It was funny when that lady and his family said, don't let nobody borrow your clothes, whatever you do. That was funny and random. Uh, he, he seems really, really cool and really, really fun, like a nice guy. I, I definitely think, see myself getting along with him if I was in the house with him. Uh, he mentioned that he's gay and that his brother actually was a big, big brother fan. And unfortunately, his he lost his brother to cancer, which, again, I cannot imagine. I don't deal with deaths well, and then to have someone that close to you pass away is just like, ah, oh, my heart goes out. Especially, y'all have that big brother connection as the show Big Brother Connection, and he's your big brother. Like, it's, like, I hope he does well. I hope Kimo does really, really well. Next up, we have my favorite up to this point, which was Chelsea. Uh, she was from Rancho Cucamonga, California, which, in my opinion, I don't know, but whenever I hear Rancho Cucamonga, I assume she come from money in some type of way. Her parents, they got money, like, if you're from there, your family got money. She's a former basketball player, so we got some athletes in this first eight. She's also like a church girl, and she's like a 
she says she's like a hood girl. She's like a, she's holy and hood. Her video package was very, very fun. She seemed really, really cool. I definitely would get along with her and she would probably be in my core group of friends there and probably a friend that I would keep throughout the house for after the season. And last but not least, we have Tucker, who in my opinion, he seemed pretty cool. He mentioned that he works for like a protein bar. I don't, or like a protein bar store or something like that. Uh, he seems super duper goofy. Like, super goofy. In my opinion, his appearance didn't match how he acts. <laughs> I liked him. He just seemed goofy. He kind of reminded me of Zach from BB16. Enzo from BB... Well, all those seasons he was on. Enzo, was he on two seasons? Two seasons? Um, yeah, mainly those two. He just he seemed very charismatic and very cool. But not not too charismatic like he was putting on, but just like a cool, cool guy. I liked him. That's everybody. That's the whole cast. I'm sorry if that was a long intro. But let's get right on with the show. Now, we see all them on stage. And first thing I noticed was Rubina. She looked tidy. She looked so small compared to everybody else. Like, everybody was talking about how short they were inside their little intros. But Rubina, it was noticeable. And I thought it was kind of funny. Not funny in a bad way, but like funny in like a... Like, you know. Also, I forgot to mention, this was a two-night premiere. So, one night it was eight, then the next night it was eight. And to be honest, I kind of didn't like it that much being like that because it's like we watched the same episode twice. And we didn't really get to know the cast members that well from it. It was mainly dominated by the intro and the competition. But, I'm going to just skip to they all get into the house. And it, they all seem cool. Nothing nothing bad came from this group of eight. Actually, one thing I want to mention is I saw that bedroom that they all went in with the where the beds were kind of like a flower. Uh, I would not pick that bedroom as mine. That Those beds look so uncomfortable. It looks nice for TV, but like it's like big at the top and then it just goes like smaller. smaller. It's just like, no, I don't like that. But let's get to the competition because what they do is they go inside these boxes of eight like eight boxes where you can't see each other so you can't see each other's answers and Julie said for the first time ever you guys get to vote a cast member in uh, so a cast member goes up on the screen her name's Angsley and she gives this introduction she tells us about herself and when I was watching it uh, I thought man she just sounds like she's reading the script but I didn't think anything of it I thought it was real I thought it was at first when she said you guys get to vote someone in I thought it would be a past house guest but then it was her and like her intro just sounded like she was reading the script and it also kind of sounded like a date and like she was trying to join a date and show so we get a few confessionals or DRs of the house guests and what they thought of it. Chelsea was pretty negative on it. Uh, Rubina, I, I feel, this is where I feel like I'll be best friends with Rubina because she said exactly how I feel. Like, it's competition, but who am I to deny somebody this opportunity if they want to be in this house? And that's how I feel. I feel like we already have 15 people that we're competing against. What's one more? We're still like, you know, like that's how I feel. And like, I just could not deny somebody the opportunity because I would hate it if someone denied me. So, Rubina obviously voted yes to bring the girl in. This group actually was a 4 4 vote. Uh, so, four people had to do one competition, other four had to do the other one. It was like, oh, because we found out that Angsley is not real, it's the AI. Well, she's a TikToker, she was a real person. But, and then, like, when they announced that she wasn't getting in the house, like, her face. Just looked so disappointed and upset. And like I was like, damn. <laughs> but then she kind of like explained that what her name stands for and that she was going to be in the house. And I was like, ah, okay. Like, I, I had no idea. So this all took me by surprise. So the people that voted yes, they have a chance to enhance their game. The people that voted no, uh, their game is about to get downgraded if they come last in the competition so the upgrade competition is a color one where they on a chair and they spin around which i would do horrible at i do not do good with being dizzy and they have to remember a cutter a color pattern and whoever does it in the quickest amount of time with the most answers correct they get the upgrade and the downgrade is they did a what did they do Oh, they had to put their head inside of a thing with bugs or insects or whatever it was cockroaches scorpions spiders and something else uh, but they put their heads in there and they had to unscramble some words the words were super easy the people did it so fast and to be honest I did not really like the downgrade competition that much I feel like it was like I'm just like okay you put your head in there but the bugs aren't like they're not on you so like I don't know I just feel like it was like 
You could have done it without the bugs, because th they were no hindrance to them at all. But Angela went, and she was super di- Angela is the older lady, right? The the 50-year-old lady? I think her name's Angela, yeah. She went, she was super dizzy, it was so funny. Uh, she got up, and like, I think she got one right. And it didn't even look like she did it on purpose, like she like fell over and hit it. Tucker went inside the downgrade competition with the bugs, and he was super charismatic. That guy, like I said in the intro, like, he was talking the whole time, he was making us laugh, and like, he was like, this is, I'm not, I'm used to bugs. So he saw like stuff, he's like, oh, this is... New York City, was it rats or cockroaches? Cockroaches. He's like, this is New York. I'm from there. And he was just funny. He made me laugh the whole time. And it looked like he had a decent time until we saw the other people. Then we saw Chemo. He moved fast, but it was like silent. So we just got to like watch him work. It was nothing special. He did. Sorry, my camera did die. And to be honest, it died an hour ago because I had to take it to charge for an hour. And now I don't really remember where I was. So I'm going to have to, excuse me while I look at my notes. So we talked about Angela. I know. We talked about Tucker. We talked about chemo. I don't, uh, maybe that's where I left off chemo. He moved pretty fast, but it was silent, and he moved a little bit faster than Tucker. Next, we saw Joseph. He did the winning competition, or not winning, the people that voted for Angsley to come in. And she did the, he did the spinning, and he was actually saying, like, the first letter of each color. Like, he would say B, or B, R, or whatever the fuck. Sorry. <laughs> he would say that. And, uh... After four, he got lost, and he just kind of, like, gave up, And he, but he did get four. He got to four and then got the fifth one wrong. Next, we have my girl, Rubina. I love, she sat in the chair, and she spent all her out, and, like, she was focused at first. Then she just, like, kind of, like, started laughing, like, I don't know where we at now. And uh, when she stood up, she's, like, almost, mm, like, gagging about to puke. Uh, she stood up. She looked pretty dizzy, but she got four. She got four pretty quick. I think she went faster than Joe. Sif. Next we got Cam. He was inside the people that voted no with the bugs. He was super fast. Like he stuck his head inside the box with the animals or insects and like he figured out the words in like two seconds. Like but they were pretty easy. And he went back out and he he was just super fast. Like he got it in like actually I did write the numbers down. He got it in 45 seconds. Then we see Chelsea and it looked like she got off to like she still went quick but it looked like she was when she started I was like oh she's not gonna win this. Uh, she went inside, she figured out the word, this is where I feel like she was a little bit slower than the other three, is when she went to the board to get the to the word that she unscrambled, everyone just like grabbed the word. Her, she looked at the board and like took a few seconds reading all the words, then got the, the, whatever, the word. Maybe when she was standing there, like everyone else looked at the words and was like reading them so that they knew what they would be looking for, and maybe she didn't, and like she just... Or did they just walk right inside and go? I don't know. I'm ran. I'm a. Uh, I'm a. Uh, what's that word called? I'm just rambling at this point. She actually got done in 55 seconds, which that wouldn't have made her come in last place. But she forgot to plug in. Like there was a plug you had to do at the end, and she forgot to plug it in. So she went back into there with the bugs and looked around, and it was. It started to get a little cringe because like, oh no, no, Caitlyn puzzle, no. Uh, if you watch BB20, you know what that reference is. But no, uh, she eventually saw the plug. She plugged it in and she hit the button and she was like, damn it, like, or dang it, whatever she said. Because she knew she had messed up. Last but not least, we got Mackenzie. And to be honest, Mackenzie spent in the chair and she didn't even really seem that dizzy. She stood up and she got four answers right real fast and the fifth one she got wrong. Uh, making her the winner. Now we go to episode two, which is just a repeat of episode one. So I'm just about to go through the cast real fast, and then we'll get to the competition. First up, we see Quinn, who I like a lot. Like, I, I really like this cast. I like a lot of people. There's not really anyone I really dislike. Spoiler alert. So he has crazy, like, he kept talking about his hair, and how I have crazy hair. Uh, he is a world Guinness Book World Record holder for standing on one foot, I think it is. I think that's what it is, blindfolded. He also is a super fan. He has a uh, cutout of Zingba, life-size cutout of Zingba. Next, we have Brooklyn. And I ain't gonna lie, Brooklyn seems like my type of woman. She looked like a boss. She says she's an, a business administrative, not assistant, but business administrator. I don't know. She had a, a really good job title. She's a mom. She had three kids, she has a husband, and she just seemed, she came off as a boss. She just seemed like a really good business lady, like a boss. She's a former Miss Texas, Miss America. 
She says she came from a low-income household and she worked her way up. She describes herself as classy, sassy, and a badass. I think it was classy, sassy, and badassery. Next up we have Matt. He seemed like he's like the jock of the season maybe. He definitely sounded like he was going to The Bachelor with his little introduction. Uh, but he described himself as competitive. He actually said that there's not a single competition in the house that he thinks he cannot win. I'm like, damn, you're very, now I'm not gonna say cocky, but confident because you don't even know what these competitions are. But in Big Brother, the competitions, some of them are just luck based. So, I mean, I guess. Next up we have Lisa and I remember when I was watching this, I actually missed her name and I went so long without knowing her name. Like, <laughs> so long. But her name is Lisa. Uh, she's a celebrity chef. She's also a boss, just like uh, my girl Brooklyn. Uh, and she says she's like the vibe. She seemed cool. I liked her. Next up, we have Leah, who should be my favorite because she says she's a chubby chaser, which is hilarious. And it made me really wish that I made it on this season. But she's a cocktail waitress. She's blonde. She looks super familiar. Like, super duper familiar. Like, I don't know. Like, she kind of reminded me of Brittany Haynes a little bit. I don't know. It seemed like I've seen her before. I don't know if she was on another TV show or something, but she seemed cool. Next up, we have Cedric, who... I was like, oh my god, his introduction, he's just mainly talking about getting in the show, man. It's like, the whole time. Like, he's, like, talking about The Bachelor and all that. Like, I don't know. Was he the one that said, uh, Big Brother has a better success rate at couples in The Bachelor? It might, that might have been somebody else. But, I like him. Uh, he was a former, he was in, like, had a secret job in the Marines that he couldn't even talk about. That was cool. He was raised by his grandma, so that's, I mean, like, I, I'm really close with my grandma when she was living in the same state as me. So that was cool. Then we get t Cor. Who, like, she seems really, really dope. Uh, she mentioned that she crochets, she has her own business, she got shouted out by Michelle Obama, she lived in London, or I think she still lives in London. Her accent is, like, from a lot of different places. But then, I'm not gonna lie, as she, her intro was going on, I know, like, it's an intro and you're supposed to talk about yourself, but she seemed like she was kind of braggadocious. Like, she was like, yeah, I got shot out by Michelle Obama. And, like, it seemed like she kept mentioning stuff like that. But I don't know. I don't know, like, don't take that wrong way. I like her. I thought she was cool. Like, she had mentioned that she was the tap captain of the debate team. I was on the debate team. Captain. <laughs> she has two moms, uh... And she describes herself as a nerd. I think it was like captain of the nerds or leader of the nerds, something like that. Last but not least, we have Kenny, who's an older guy, kinda. Uh, he's a police officer, former detective, I think. Uh, he does. He deals with like drugs, like a detect, a drug detective or something like that. And he got that job because he lost somebody to drug addiction, which uh, heart goes out to. He seemed pretty cool to me. He seemed pretty fun. Uh, I liked him. But let's get to the house. So Quinn was telling jokes. He was telling all types of jokes. He was a funny guy going in. Leah was checking out Matt immediately, but it was kind of weird because she said she liked fat guys, and he definitely is not fat. Or let me say chubby. t Core feels like she's in high school again, she says. Matt kept talking about how he'll have a target on his back. We didn't really get much from Lisa, and I was still trying to figure out what her name was. Cedric says he likes Kenny a lot, and he noticed Kenny's tattoo, and he said, oh, he's either a police officer or inside of the military, some type of military branch. And I thought that was funny, because it was like, damn, Cedric really was, like, working as a whatever job he said he had. Kenny also liked Cedric, and he kept saying, like, Cedric reminds him of his son, and he was asking him a lot of questions real quick, like, because he liked him. He liked Cedric. Brooklyn notices something on the screen or on the wall that was like a screen, like a hologram, and she's like, that's going to be something. That's going to be something to do with this season. Let's get right to the competition. They get the video from Ang Lee. It's the same, uh, or it might be a little bit different, but it's, you know, same stuff. Surf shop, whatever. Of course, Cedric was talking about how she looks and blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, maybe, you know, showman's. I don't know. Matt was saying that he kind of was sus of her because he notices that she was... <laughs> he says she was wearing, like, a tinfoil dress and yeah, blue hair, but she says she works at a surf shop. Watching this the second time, her video just seems so fake. Like, the first time, I just thought it was a real person. Obviously, now I know, and looking back, it just, like... I said it sounded like a dating ad, like she was trying to get a date, but it just sounded so rehearsed, so scripted. I like what Leah said. Leah had kind of the same mindset as 
Rubino, she says she welcomes competition. And in this group, only two people voted for Angsley to come in. And those people were Leah and Quinn. And this competition was a little bit different. Well, actually, it was completely different. Uh, the loser competition was they had to move this disc in this maze with only using their face. Uh, it made all of them look goofy, <laughs> but I liked it. And the winning competition was this little thing where it was like moving back and forth and they had to plug in some plugs. Uh, I liked it. Uh, only two people played it, and uh, my boy Quinn won that one. I was actually taking notes on the competitions, but the losing competition just kept flipping. Like I guess because they had to get through six, they would show some of this person and some of that person, some of this person, some of that person. So I didn't get like I just was like, all right, whatever. But I will say Cedric came last, and I thought like he like how do they say who came last? Because I thought he got his first two very very quick, but. I guess. I was very surprised that he came last. Well, I was really surprised. They all meet and uh, Angsley's back. She tells them about who lost. She says that the winners will be in secret. And I have to say, there's is a little bit of a problem with the winners being secret, anonymous. The competitions were different. So, all they have to do is talk about what they did. And the two winners, especially in the second cap, the second group of people, those two people don't know about that maze thing. So if they talked about that, like I feel like you can get tripped up real quick. And the color spinning thing, they had to, like, what was the other one? Like I feel like you can just get tripped up. Because if you didn't do a competition, you weren't there at all, you have no idea what it was. In conversation, you can slip up. So I, I feel like anonymous won't last anonymous for, for very long. Um... And then they, she told the downgrades, which were harsh. You can't compete, which was Cedric and Chelsea. Unfortunately, Chelsea. But they can't compete in the HOH or they can't compete in the veto. And I think they're going to be wearing a costume because they're called the mascots. That's harsh to me. Uh, it's a lot. The winners, however, get something called America's Veto and Deep Fake HOH. My final thoughts is I liked it. I liked this. Well... I wish it wasn't two nights. I wish it was just one night and 90 minutes. Because we don't really know much. And we have to wait till Sunday. But the live I'm a live feed person, so I watch the live feeds. And I watch live feed updates. If y'all want to watch it, I suggest checking out Matt Rose D or a lot of other people on YouTube who do those videos. I'm going to be reviewing every single episode of this season. Uh, at least I hope. Like, I'm very excited to watch this and go on this journey with y'all. My favorite is Chelsea and Rubina. Rubina? Uh, who else do I like? I like Chelsea and Rubina a lot. I'm a Brooklyn fan. I like her. Um, I, I, I see it online. Some people don't like Tucker, but I'm a Tucker fan. I like him. I do think I have two least favorites, but it's not that I don't like them. They're just, if I had to rank the cast over my favorite to least favorite, maybe I'll do that on Sunday after for that review. But anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to leave it a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video on all forms of social media. Until next time, catch y'all later.